Hey folks, we have a long-awaited Grateful 42 video yet again. Oh, and we have something special to show you. I got my hands on some fun stuff down in California. Super micro server hardware porn. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we're not exactly going to put this in anything, but we thought we'd take... I thought I'd give you guys a look at it, because it's not often you get an up-close, personal look at some of this hardware. This is a super micro quad socket motherboard. Not quite sure on the year, although you said last year, I think, right? You get you get a CD and like that's it. We got in here. Probably super micro checklist. Yeah, that's all it is. It's like we put it in the box. Check. <laughs> it comes in this nice per pink foam. So yeah, both I have two of these. Both of these flew as uh, under plane luggage for twenty five dollars. <laughs> 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 Screw FedEx shipping. Now check, we don't even have to unwrap it, just look at that. Mm. Here you go, folks. This is what server hardware is all about. You get quad channel RAM. It might be dual, actually it might just be dual channel, I'm not really sure. Um, I don't know. I, no. I didn't really look up what it was yet. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Through much of it. You can look it up right now. Though. By the color coding, it's hard to tell. But... As you can see, there are four sockets, each with its own set of RAM, and they're and they're and they're elongated sockets. If you take a look at them pretty oh, closely, oh, it's Opteron. And it's, that's because it's an Opteron board. It takes the AMD Opteron chips, which really aren't as big of a standard as they used to be in servers. Nowadays, it's usually Intel, but hey, it's still a quad core, <laughs> and that's pretty sweet. It even has a fan cooled chipset. It looks like, which is pretty intense for something like this. I'd be worried about that, actually, because fans like that, fans that tiny, eh, I don't know. Nah. There's a big bag of silica gel. That's nice. I want a refund. I'm missing a whole BGA package. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're missing a whole chip. Looks like it would have been populated with more slots, but... Yeah, this is... I, I, if I... I don't even know. The, there's two different models of this. Um, I guess this might be a lower end or yeah. lower model because this does not have other slots. It only has one, but considering not what you can do with this board, that's still pretty impressive. I should probably just stick the link for what it is in the video description. Pretty much. But, yeah, we'll take it out. Well, let me see the checklist real quick. This is the model of the motherboard. It is an MBD-H8QGI uh, plus F... Oh. And there you go. Let me move that silica gel out of the way. It's stuck there. Oh, there you go. Well, anyway, look, as you can see here, we have onboard USB, which is pretty typical. I have a super micro board with that on it. That's nice for uh, keeping booting information with UEFI. Assuming this has it, there's a TPM module thing there. You get six SATA ports on board. If you got a higher end model, you could have used about eight SAS ports, mm -hmm. and SAS that, is that's awesome. That's probably what this is. This is just missing all its onboard SAS that, control. That, yeah, that's probably the SAS controller, and that's yeah. the, the ports would normally go there. So this is just your regular SATA board, which is like something I would use, because I have no plans to get SAS drives for my stuff either. Um, the sockets are huge and long. <laughs> Opterons are weird. Uh, what else we got here? It looks like there's a button here. I wonder if that's like a reset button or something like that. No idea. See that right there? There's a button right there. Switch one. <laughs> so, yeah, switch one. It's got dual built-in NICs, which I assume are gigabit. Onboard video. You get serial port for, uh, you know, connecting a common. Looks like there's an IPMI remote management port up there. Uh, some USB and it has PS2. It's a real computer. It has PS2. <laughs> that one's for UXW Bill right there. Junk in the trunk. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look how big these back plates are. It's crazy. They're freaking huge. <laughs> long plates for long sockets. And there's even a lot of stuff populated on the bottom of the board, too. It's crazy. Look at that. Really small transistors and some surface mounts and some chips right there. And tail ends of through hole. And below the RAM, there's like Dude, nothing. Each, on, the, on the back end, you got some more power management stuff. Look at that. 
There's a looks like a transistor right there, and then some some other chips down here. Com one complicated motherboard. That's pretty cool. So this, my friends, is a taste of server hardware. If you work in a data center, this is the stuff you get to play with. So this is your motivation to get into this industry. It's really cool to just look at the stuff and be like, ooh. But eventually, when you just start handling this stuff daily, you'll think, wow, I can do a lot with this. That, yeah, that, that's where I am right now. Um, here's a treat. This is this is some stuff that normally I'd never have on this channel, but Great for 42 happened to get a hold of some stuff I like this. I got some fun toys. Hey, check it out. It's poker chips. It even has D-E-D -E -D written on it. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Peel that off and move it over. Here is a chip. If you can get the get it in the light, so you can see what's on it. These are all these are all Intel confidentials of various vintage. This Some is of a, these. This yeah. is a, this is these are dead CPUs, so you can just handle them any way you need to. I guess here's an Intel confidential. Well, these are the problem. ones we had that didn't post for various reasons. Um, some of these I'm actually cons I'm actually surprised didn't post. Like this one's missing, absolutely zero surface mounts. And which all the capacitors are still there. Which a lot of we had we had a lot of we had two hundred and five of these. We went through about a hundred of them, just popping them in and out of a board, seeing what will post, what doesn't post, and I had the joy of labeling everything. <laughs> you were the label guy. So this one actually surprised me that it didn't post because it's missing nothing. It probably this might be one of the ones that had a uh, a scorched pin that we thought oh throw well, it in see what happens. Well, it looks like there's a scratch right there too. If you, nah. if you, if you look at it sideways, a little bit, but no. I don't think that'd make a difference though. That we we had these things. Some of them we got like just an entire side was just gone, just, just gone. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a problem. But if you look at these, what what are these by the way? You know, offhand, are these uh, Xeon? Uh, are these Xeon? X seventy five fifties for the most part. X seventy five fifty. So these are Xeons. I, right. Yeah, uh, my phone might remember all the all the arc searching oh, I had here, to do. Now here's an example of why something like this might be defective. As you can see, there's a bunch of surface mount capacitors here, and there's one missing up top there, and there's two missing down there. Now, but that the the thing is, we had we had some missing those? a lot of surface mounts and would still post. Yeah, that's the funny thing about these. I've seen a Max Arcade video where a Pentium 4, I think, did the same thing. Because mm -hmm. all these are, are coupling capacitors for the yeah. most part. Just so for... not they don't always need to be there to for the chip to work, but for longevity, it's probably a good for, idea. For longevity and for 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 high... Uh, what's the word? High reliability? No. Um... For high for high volumes of workload, if, if the CPU is being used 100%, the capacitors let it keep working at 100% if the power supply can't kind of keep up for a jitter. It makes right. it more stable in, in high power consumption configurations. So, like, you have all four of these populated, and th these don't go in there, but just for... Simple yeah, these chips. These chips do not go in that board. These are just these are 2008 vintage chips. Yeah. Um... For for high for yeah. high power workloads. Yeah, here's one with all, all the, the all on. the capacitors do is let it stay stable in in high in high energy workloads. Now all those capacitors are here on this one, but I bet you it. But it still doesn't work. As I you wonder can see. if we have the do we have the one missing? Now this no, one we don't have. There was one of them that was just straight up missing this little this little uh, controller. <laughs> that was straight up missing. That yeah, we had shit. one that was That's just funny. straight up missing that. We didn't even try. Now it. this one has some writing on it, so let's do some let's do some re some like hieroglyphics research on this one. Oh, there you go. Two thousand ABZ. Wonder what that is. Where'd my phone go? Twenty three times six, eighteen megabytes, eight C. Yeah, this might have been some sort of internal. This might have been some sort of labeling system. So I knew what was what. Yeah. This one has some issues on the bottom. Is that a phone the, uh, I have no idea. The uh, if you look at this chip, I don't know if I can be able. To, yeah, you can see it on camera. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a bunch of scratches right there on the left side where uh, contacts are just scraped off. So that might actually just be thermal paste. We ran into that a lot with thermal paste being everywhere on these things. Oh, I was going to say, that looked a lot like... Uh, it's hard to tell. It on, really is. Because I'm, I'm looking through the LCD of the camera. That, yeah, it might just be thermal paste. I don't know. 
Any more of these? Oh, there's some with some carnage. Oh man, that one's that one was removed deep. Yeah. <laughs> the the silly thing too is sometimes we'd look at one. This one's missing three, but sometimes these these larger capacitors would just be crushed and fractured everywhere. Ew. <laughs> ceramics. It's hilarious, really. Let, let me go get a let me go get a typical LGA chip. Okay, here's your typical LGA chip. This is LGA 775, which is basically still the same size as something modern like a socket 1150 or 1155 CPU. Now, you put this next to one of these Xeons. <laughs> I don't know what socket these are, but these are like 1366 no. or something. It's it's it was a one these are a one off socket uh 15 something something. Fifteen so oh, I, I can look it up. Uh, I got it right here. Um, Intel Arc. Here we go. So these are all. Come on, Google. Oh wait, I don't have Wi-Fi here. I can get you Wi-Fi if you need it. Give me Wi-Fi. Buffalo remote. Buffalo main. What am I doing? Give me a minute. I have to do Wi-Fi support. Wi-Fi. All right. I'll put I'll put the Arc link in the in the video too. Yeah, I'll put that. We in the got um. The, the vast majority of the ones we were finding were all X7550s. So what socket get, is that? I'm looking right now. 18 megabytes of cache. Launch date, 2010, quarter one. Oh, these are 2010, because they, they said 08 on the actual chip die copyright. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, lithography, 45 nanometer. Uh, here we go. So, like I said, the vast majority were all 8-core with hyper-threading. Their max turbo was 2.4 gigahertz, DDR3 usage. So this is a socket. Sockets, FCLGA 1567. 1567, that's an odd socket. It really is. Now, there's only like two motherboards that support it. My friend got one off of eBay, and we were just plopping them in, seeing which ones worked and which ones didn't. He got a set of four of these ones, the X7550s, uh, that were undamaged, unscathed, booted right away. It was great. Um... So he has four of those. He's going to use them to make a very fancy coffee table, actually. <laughs> Reminds me of a B Bishop PCM video I saw where he, he had an idea when he was a kid to tile his bathroom in 46 processors. Dude, no, you cause, you could this? do that now with these, these probably. Are the, are these the, no, these are Intel Pentiums. This, um, this is a Pentium 4, just my, yeah, my for a size had, comparison. My buddy had a set of, of this form factor, but they were Opterons, and... Like four hundred of them just in a box. Well, if they're Opterons, are probably wider than no, that. No, not even. They oh, were really? they were old, old, old. Oh, okay. Um, he had a whole bunch of those, and I I dumped the whole box out and just started tiling his floor with them. <laughs> 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 That's beautiful. Well, there you go, folks. That is a lot of poker chips for you. They don't work one bit. Well, this penny and four might work, but <laughs> you would you wouldn't want to use that anyway. Yeah, no. all of all of these are those processors that we tested that were. Non-functional, so I labeled dead. Um, D E D. It was dead. really, it was really. Ooh, this one is. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a, there's a capacitor. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I have my very own capacitor. Look at that. It's adorable. It's so tiny. It's a big I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that with the rest of the chips. <laughs> there we go. You can go back. You can go back there and never work again. <laughs> We were actually, well, it didn't even work anyway. We, so. we ran out of time. We were going to try using the parts on some of these to try to resurrect the ones that were only missing one part and didn't boot. We never got around to it because there, there were so many of them that were, that were booting. We never had time to do repairs on non-bootable CPUs. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, fun, I just noticed something. This CPU, you can tell the CPU is used because this one side's kind of warped. That's, uh, that's this side right there. Oh, the PCB is warped? The PCB oh, is warped God. on that. You can even sort of see that in the... <laughs> the apparently the coolers on these must have been tight. Cause... Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, because they're, they're... Yeah, that one's fine. I don't know. I'm pretty sure these went through a lot of computers before they made it to my friend's place. And, like, just... Nope. Yeah, probably. This is this is the warped one. That That's... that's I don't, I don't know if you can really see that, but... Compared to another chip that's not... It's pretty straight. That one's straight. This one is not. That's that's something for sure. Well, here's a look at the ARC page. 
a lot of these were X7550s, as Grape 42 was saying, 2010. They were discontinued in 2012. So these were these were eight core hyperthreaded chips. Yep. 2.4 gigahertz max speed. So these took DDR. So these are pretty early. They took some DDR3, 1066, and 1333 stuff. Yeah, we ha, actually we actually ha, had a problem. The temperature while, while testing some of the CPUs. Like the first four we tested didn't boot. We didn't figure out why until we realized it was using DDR3 RAM with a higher frequency and it wouldn't auto throttle down. Oh uh, yeah, some so of the then board, we had to start all over. <laughs> some of the boards and chips don't like that very much. <laughs> What's great is that the temperature limit is 69 degrees. <laughs> cue the cue the stupid jokes in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. It uses FC LGA 1567. That's an odd socket that I've never heard of because it literally I've, it's a it's a one off socket that was only used on two or three motherboards. That's that's weird. So we're seeing actually some pretty rare stuff here. Or at least stuff that's just maybe it's not rare, but it's, it's just it's stuff, not it's you definitely don't see not it. rare, but you know you don't see it every day. It, it, it's nifty to finally have yeah, an Intel confidential CPU, even if it is borked beyond belief. And Intel confidentials, I wouldn't use uh, like uh, San, like um, my friend Sansui three fifty A was saying, you really shouldn't use these in production, but. They're kind of cool. I mean, they're, they're kind of cool. Although, if, if Intel finds out you were using them in production, there goes all your warranties. <laughs> Pretty much, because <laughs> you know, you never know what will happen with these. I mean, these are dead. This is why. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. There's your Pentium Four, just for size comparison. On top of <laughs> one of the bigger ones, it makes it makes it a joke. It's like putting a Fiat on top of a Suburban. It's just like, yeah. Anyhow, that is some that is some server hardware porn for you. Some elusive CPUs and a quad socket motherboard. It's a shame we can't do anything with them, but I just thought we'd give you a little bit of a look at them, just because it's something you don't see every day. Well, that's a video. Good video. Have a good one, everybody.